Hello, everyone. I am Brandon Reschke, your favorite copyright attorney's video editor. Joined live in the studio, virtual studio today with Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Hello, Leonard. Hello, Brandon. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Where are we, Leonard? We are in White Plains, New York. Uh, first, let me say thank you for all of your efforts to get the stream up and running. It appears Oof, to yeah. be a YouTube error of some kind. We would hit basically start streaming on the YouTube live control room and it would say this event cannot be modified, which is very strange because, you know, we were the ones making the event. So it didn't make any sense to us. But we got we're here. We're in White Plains, New York. Uh, you can't see it because I don't think I can switch cameras from this position. Like, I don't think I don't think this interface lets me switch cameras. But um, I'm staring at the uh, the courthouse, which we'll have better video of for the after show. I'm sitting on the top of a parking garage or parking direct, the municipal parking deck, parking direct, parking deck, uh, just outside the courthouse here, about a block away. And the sun is shining. It is a beautiful 28 degrees Fahrenheit or negative two degrees centigrade. And we are patiently awaiting the opening of the courthouse and the finishing of this stream. So I can walk over there and head up to the sixth floor after going through the strictest security that that you know that you can that you can get through really as a civilian in 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 these things um the federal courthouse security they, they even take my pen sometimes so I have, I have a short pen that they think is a weapon so uh, they don't let me have it so sixth floor which is the top floor of that building and judge kathy seedle i think it's kathy judge seedle will be determining whether or not attorney Leibowitz goes to jail today really um there's actually two jail parts to this if he does not show up then she will issue a warrant for his arrest a warrant that goes not to the local police department but rather to the u.s marshals service so the u.s marshals will come looking for him and drag him to her courthouse and her courtroom if they have to uh usually that's enough to get somebody's ass in gear so we're expecting Leibowitz to show up and the second incarceration threat is that because he's maintained this lie, because he has not given the death certificate, and I'm assuming that the, when the death certificate is revealed, it will not show what he says it did, uh, that he'll have a lot of backpedaling and explaining to do. If the judge is not satisfied with those explanations, he's probably facing some kind of criminal contempt of court. Now, the judge hasn't called it criminal contempt of court. But hear me out, I don't think she has to call it criminal contempt. If you tried to hold somebody in criminal contempt and you hadn't given them notice of it and due process, opportunity to respond, hearing and all that, then yeah, 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 that's some kind of violation. But the opposite is, is, is not true. Just because she doesn't call it a criminal contempt proceeding doesn't mean that he does not have notice that he is likely facing incarceration, or as at least that's, that's, that's on the table. Uh, that he has an opportunity to respond in a hearing today before the judge. It's a meaningful hearing. He'll have an opportunity to explain, and the judge will take what he says with some kind of weight that she will give it based on his overall credibility. If he is unable to satisfy that standard, then, yeah, I think she can hold him in criminal contempt, and criminal contempt can mean large fines or jail time. And this judge is pissed. I would expect at least a day. I can't, I, I don't know, I've been wrong about these things before. I expected somebody who had neglected a child to be given uh, a day of contempt of court for not paying the, the the child support, like for the sixth month in a row or something, but no, that didn't happen. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but I expect Judge Kathy Seidel to seriously consider and probably give him at least one day in jail to sort of give him a, a, a smack in the butt to shape up. But I don't even know, but that he'll be able to shape up because look at how much he's screwed up. Like this is there's literally a quote unquote growing body of law in the state of New York about Richard Leibowitz and when it's appropriate to sanction him and how much. So at some point it's going to become a disciplinary issue. He's recently been disbarred by the Northern District of California for basically entering his appearance prematurely without entering his appearance. He filed documents without entering his appearance figuring that he could just do it along the way the judge would just give him a deficiency notice or the clerk would give him a deficiency notice and he would just simply you know 
cure the deficiency. Sorry, it's early. I've been up since 545, 445. Um, he would cure the deficiency and then, then he'd be fine. But that's not always how this works. And judges are allowed to strictly enforce their rules of courtroom decorum and scheduling and things like that. Even if Amarel Ansari and Edward Thomas Kennedy get a free pass sometimes, uh, the lawyers are supposed to know what they're doing and are not supposed to screw up like that. So, for example, I am dressed in a suit and a tie. I did not come in jeans and a shirt and tie. I came in a suit and tie. And I hope that the judge will not hold me in any kind of, of course she won't, but it will hold me in any kind of contempt for doing anything inappropriate in her courtroom. I have to know her basic rules. If she says no cell phones, well, that means no cell phones. If she says no, you know, talking, no eating, whatever, whatever her rules are. And then the rules, of course, get more strict and more, more procedural, you know, about when you file things. But we're just here to, we're just here for the show. So first, uh, Evan, was it Evan Williams? Evan Williams, thank you for the $5 super chat. Quote, unquote, I derive so much happiness from this story. I'm not sure if you just lost my feed there for a moment, but um, we do. I'm back. Yeah, we lose your feed when you tap out, just so you know. Did I, I come back? Some super chats. Yeah, you came back. Okay. Do you lose my audio? No. Okay, good. All right. Um, so I'm, can... I'm really excited. Go ahead. I can definitely read some super chats for you if you want. Go ahead. Go for it. Thank you um, for the super, have... set, super, super sets, super chats. <laughs> Andrew Vaughn uh, super chatted $2 and uh, said, put this towards fixing YouTube. Yay. Um, I don't know how I'm going to fix YouTube. <laughs> Zachary uh, Sylvester, which is a very interesting spelling of a name, says, enjoy the free super chat. Thanks for all the informative stuff you do. Yay. Um, and Charles Simmons I'll, says. I'll, I'll get coffee. <laughs> and Charles Salmon says, nice suit, Leonard. Way to represent. Thank you. And then uh, we have Nicholas Cho Choate. Nicholas Choate, uh, who says, awesome show. More sovereign citizen law, please. More sovereigns. We, we will definitely look for more sovereign citizen stuff. I think Edward Thomas Kennedy has a whole library. Uh, I, I'm trying not to give Amaral and Sari like, too much airtime. You know, he gets a big head about him. Um, Leibowitz. Leibowitz is like, is like the lawyer sovereign citizen almost. He's like, he thinks he's better than, than having to do all these things that we're all supposed to do. So yeah, he thinks he's better than than us, uh, or at least that's my impression so far. So what are the so white is... oh, um, A lot uh... of people are <laughs> a lot of people are asking what happens if he doesn't bring um, the death certificate today, and I think you might have some news on that, Leonard. Yes. So criminal contempt can be used to compel someone to do something. So if I think there was a case where a journalist had a source and uh, I don't know, a decade ago, I think it was the Bush administration or maybe even the Obama administration put pressure on that sort uh, on the on the journalist by jailing them for a period of time until they revealed their source or until the court was satisfied that they weren't going to reveal the source and that they could not be compelled by criminal contempt. Here, he can be compelled by criminal contempt to produce the death certificate or be jailed until such time as he is motivated by the incarceration to do so. Oh, but wait, 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 he'll be in jail. How can, yes, yes, until he calls somebody and says, I'll do it. Until he calls his lawyer and says, I'll do it. They might release him to go get the certificate then. Uh, it'll be worked out however it needs to be done. If he says it's in my safe at, it's in my bank, the pot, my, my safe deposit box at this bank, well, then he can just turn over the key or the passcode for the safe deposit box or however that works for his bank. I'm assuming that they've moved into the 21st century at some point too. Um, so yeah, he is likely really facing jail today. There is a significant chance that he will be incarcerated in that very courthouse a block away over there. Now, in terms of the death certificate, didn't you read something by the smoking gun? Yes, the death certificate. Here we go. Hang on. This is, I don't know if you guys can see that. It does not let me focus. Oh, that's great. That's that's just great. Camera. <laughs> it's focusing on your windshield, your dirty windshield here. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get it to focus on something else. Maybe if you stick it but, out the window, uh, it'll work. I don't know. I think if I, I, I've had this problem before where it doesn't trigger the focus on the camera. 
Let's switch huh. the camera back. That's oh, there better. You go. There you go. That's better, yeah. So that's yeah. the courthouse over there. That uh, tan and gray, beige, whitish building out there. And I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> um, about the smoking gun article. Right. Because a lot of the people are doubting whether the death certificate even exists. Uh, the smoking gun claims to have found the death certificate, claims to have traced his ancestry back to his maternal grandfather, which was my suspicion. Um, we were only, that was only a half suspicion, so I'm not saying it was a prediction. But I suspected that it would be hard to find the death certificate on our own without knowing the names of his relatives. Now, I, I don't like to be... I don't like to be culturalist or racist or anything like that, so I'm going to try to avoid it here. But let's be fair. Richard Leibowitz claims to be from a Jewish family, so I can probably fairly call him a, a Jewish a a person of the Jewish religion. And let's be fair. They take death rights seriously. If the grandfather died, he would know the same day. But the death certificate doesn't show a death on the same day. It shows a death on April 9th if that's really the death certificate and if they really found the right person and not some other relative or some other person's relative and not Leibowitz's relative. But it appears to be his grandfather. It appears to be his grandfather's death certificate. It appears that he was in the hospital and died at the hospital. We don't know for how long he was at the hospital, but most hospital deaths are accompanied by at least a brief hospital stay. I'm going to guess. So I'm not saying that his, 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 Grandfather could not have died suddenly, but his grandfather, likely they knew he was in the hospital and likely they knew he was dying and likely they just didn't know when. So why a person would stick to this story, I don't know. So maybe there is something to his story and the judge is going to give him a chance. The judge has given him six months of chances. The judge, it was, it was six months ago. It was seven months ago yesterday, the hearing that he missed. So we'll see. I'll come back here. I'll report what happened. I don't believe I'll be able to take any pictures in the courthouse or make any recordings in the courthouse. So we'll see how that goes. I don't even know what they're going to think of me having my microphones on me in the courthouse. Um, just the little ones like pocket microphones because um, they don't like that when you record stuff. Um, and um, just to I might just not remind... take them. I'm just not going to take the microphones. I'll just take my phone and that's it. And my wallet. And just to remind our audience that April 12th was the day that he missed a meeting yeah. and the alleged death certificate says April 9th. So yeah. although he would have been sort of within the grieving period, it, it, he might not, or he, he could he have said have that. He could have said that. He could have said, your honor, I'm sorry. I was still grieving and I totally forgot about it. My bad. I'll pay for the hearing. And he would have been fine. I think. I think he would have been absolutely fine. Now, we do have a question about if he's jailed today, does Leibowitz automatically lose his law license? No. No, not at all. He will, if he's held in contempt of court today in any fashion, he will definitely, that will definitely be reported to his bar by the, by somebody, probably the judge, probably the judge's clerk because she's so ticked off at, at him. Um, if she discovers that he has lied, she will probably report him to his own bar, let alone that this has been reported by many legal news sources. I do not expect to be the only amateur journalist here. Maybe there will be some real journalists here. Um, I'm ex fully expecting this to be a half-packed courtroom, so I'm, I'm actually planning on going there an hour before the hearing. I'm planning on leaving in about ending this stream in about 10 minutes and walking over there and sit, just sitting in the courtroom for an hour just to make sure that I've got a good seat and that if there's anybody to talk to that I get a chance to talk to them and get a chance to get a sense of what's going on. What are the chances that we're going to be able to get an interview with Richard Leibowitz on the courthouse steps? Uh, not, not very good. I don't imagine that he likes me very much. Um, I haven't prepared an interview and I'm not bringing any interview equipment like my phone camera is going to be the best I can do. And I'm going to be interacting with Leibowitz while trying to record. This is going to be amateur hour at best for an interview with Leibowitz. But if it happens, it happens. I'll try. 
even if you just talk Richard, to Richard, would you mind answering honest. a few questions? I'll just shout yeah. to him as we're leaving or something. Richard, would you mind answering a few questions, uh, you know, for the camera? Yeah. If that's if he leaves the courthouse today, he might not leave the courthouse today. He might be in the courthouse holding cell, assuming yeah. that there is one. I can't imagine a courthouse doesn't have a holding cell. Uh, yes, the video will stay up after the live stream ends, and we're going to have another live stream after the hearing today, which could yes. be in a half hour after it starts, could be five minutes after it starts. We don't know. So we don't know what's going to happen. So yeah, here's what we're facing. Here's what we're facing. I woke up at 4.45 this morning. I got dressed. I ironed my pants last night for you. That's how much I love you guys. I ironed my pants for you last night. I have not used an iron in 10, in 10 years, a decade. So I ironed, I cleaned my iron, and then I ironed my pants last night. I had to figure out, like, what are my pants made out of? They don't have a tag on them. There's a suit. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm guessing it's wearing a wool. So I tried the wool setting, and it worked. So 4.45, I woke up this morning, got ready, got out of there by about four by about 5.30, um, put Waze on. Uh, I, I bought a phone mount for my car last yesterday, not at 5.30 this morning. Um, drove through two and a half hours of traffic from Pennsylvania to New York City area to White Plains, which is about 30 miles north of New York City, I think. Brandon keeps telling me it's farther away than I think it is. And brave traffic, but I'm glad I did because now I'm not waiting in traffic and I'm able to do the show for you here. We even had time to overcome technical difficulties and I still am not rushed to get to the courthouse. So this is great. Um, there, if there's a Starbucks along the way, I can probably even get a quick Starbucks or something. But we'll get there. I'll go through security. They will basically not allow me to take anything in. I might not even be allowed to take my cell phone, but attorneys are supposed to get a, a, a pass, like literally a, a phone pass. And I should be allowed to have my phone. Um, if not, I guess I'll have to walk back and put my phone in my car or something. Or maybe they have a, a storage. I probably have a storage box there. Um, the judge will not come out until exactly 10 a.m. or maybe even a few minutes later, but the clerks may be out. I might be able to talk to the clerks and find out if we're even having a hearing. If we don't have a hearing, it might be because something was continued. The judge could be sick or Leibowitz could be could have another grandfather die or something. Um, the judge will decide. The, the continuance might be practical. Like if something actually happens, the judge will just continue it and then deal with Leibowitz, you know, by issuing an arrest warrant or something. But I'm hoping she'll do that from the bench on the record and I'll be able to see it and report back to you what happened. Um, the, hopefully Leibowitz shows up at about 9.15, 9.30, starts getting ready. I'm not going to bug him then. That's really rude. He's super nervous. He's about to get thrown in jail. So I'm not going to I'm not going to bug him then. And after the, 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 after the judge comes out and talks to Leibowitz, we'll find out what happens. Uh, the judge might, Leibowitz might have an answer, might have the death certificate. They might go into chambers to discuss something privately. And then the judge comes back out and says, okay, we're done here. You know, everything's over. Have a nice day. Case dismissed. Um, and maybe Leibowitz has some really good explanation that will never go on the record. Um, I expect the judge to say something about it after all of this. But I don't see any of that happening with, why would it be continued? The judge is probably champing at the bit to have Leibowitz answer these questions at, with this level of, of risk, with, this, uh, with, with imprisonment, with his freedom on the table. Um, why, would, why would he have a perfectly valid explanation? We, we wouldn't be here if he had a perfectly valid explanation. He has doubled down on a lie and we all know it. And we just want to confirm it because there is that hint of doubt that like maybe he knows something we don't because some of us do acknowledge our limited perception that I don't know Leibowitz and I don't actually know his reasons. I just know humanity. I know my own humanity and I can translate that or transpose that to Leibowitz's existence and say, you know, I wouldn't do it that way. And I can't imagine anyone else would. Like, why are you doing it that way? So this insane doubling down. So and that's sort uh, of part of due process, too, that um, if you're going to escalate a punishment, you give someone the opportunity to explain themselves before you escalate. Yeah. 
So any super chats or any thank yous to say anything, any last thoughts for the last five minutes of stream? I'm going to take it out soon and oh, I got to yeah. figure out how to pay for parking. We have lots, Remember actually. your parking space, 7440. Okay. Um, we have Keen Maisel, Maisels, who says, thanks for covering this. Very curious to see the outcome. Um, thank Slack you. Slackbot, who donated $10 and said, I'm learning so much from your channel. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. We're getting better at it every day. We hope to make learning more and more fun. We want to make uh, we want to make learning law fun for both law students and lay students. We have uh, Matthew Genove, who just donated five dollars, and we have Captain Cap Captagas. Uh, I he says free super chat, which I'm guessing people are getting super chats to incentivize them to use them. Or something oh, that's like cool. That. Yeah, because I'm happy with of, that. We're getting a bunch that's of like free money ones that are that are saying that they're getting free super chats. So that's pretty cool. Sweet. I'll take all your free super chats. I love you. Thank you. That's <laughs> a win win for both of us. You don't have to pay five dollars and I get whatever part of five dollars YouTube gives me. Uh, we I got, think it's most of it. Yeah, I think it's like 70, 85 percent. Yeah, it's, like I thought that. it was high. Yeah. Uh, Gr Grunkle T. Rowe donated $10 and said, thank you for putting on pants at 445 and thanks to Brandon for being so awesome. Oh, thank you. Not just pants. Long johns. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a suit on over the long johns, but I'm also wearing because it's 28 degrees outside. What is it now? Is it still 28? I've stopped here and sat for a little while. It's still 28. Yeah, but you're in the shade, so. I'm sitting we in had, the shade. But... We had to angle the car to get the right lighting angle. For yeah, we angled the car to get the right, <laughs> the right look for the camera. Um, you Andrew know D. you're a YouTuber when you, you park where your camera angle is best. Andrew D. donates uh, five British pounds sterling and says, could you try to ask the judge for her opinion after the hearing? Are you going to be able to talk to the judge? Probably not. No, the judge usually comes out from chambers, rules, and then goes back into chambers, usually does not hang out. There's no reason why a judge can't hang out, except hanging out invites camaraderie and all that. And that can give an, a, a seeming impropriety or seeming bias or something if it was done too often. So why even chance it? So some judges just simply don't mingle. Like the captain of the ship doesn't fraternize with the crew kind of thing. Kinda, yeah. yeah. The 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 judge doesn't fraternize with the parties either. Yeah, I I'm not a party, a... so I probably am more clear to talk to the judge than anybody. Yeah. Uh, ben Hamilton donates five dollars and says, "Free super chat. Awesome that y'all are covering this." Yay! And all right, just... three minutes. Okay, one more. We just got for five dollars from Patrick Pineda um, that said, "Good luck, have fun, GLHF." Excellent. Thank you very much for all the super chats. Uh, we'll see you again here. I don't know when the hearing will be over, so it's hard to schedule the next live stream, but we'll do this again, exactly what we're doing now. Um, Brandon will, I guess, copy this event. It'll be a new announcement on our Discord and Twitter. Uh, Brandon, please do the, com the YouTube community if you haven't done that one. Uh, we haven't been using them as much, but we do use that for large announcements, and this is certainly a large announcement. Yeah, so I expect um, the hearings at 10. So that's actually in an hour and seven minutes, not not in seven minutes. It's in an hour and seven minutes. So you won't see us again until at least 10 something. Even if I get out of that courthouse and come back here directly, I, it's still going to be at least 11 o'clock. I can't I can't see it being before 11 o'clock unless the thing is over and continued like right away or something. So. And I can pretty much guarantee the technical technical difficulties we had the first time won't happen again. You want to know what happened? Yeah, sure. Uh, the second stream that I set up took precedence yeah. over the first one. Oh, so it was you had set up stream. both streams, so it was trying to to, to yes. display to the second stream first. Yes, and then it then it triggered something about the first stream not being able to be modified because it had already closed the first stream off because you were on the second yes. stream. Yes. So that won't happen yep, again. I, I, guess. I guarantee it. So yeah, don't don't do that. Don't let don't set up more than one <laughs> event at a time, at least with the same stream key. Yeah, yeah. There you go. They have to have different stream keys, is what you gotta do then. Yeah. Yeah. 
So Andrew Stahl has sent two dollars and says a little bit for gas money. Thank we you. Have Twenty-five dollars from Vinyl Scratch saying about to head wow. to Earth, but have fun in court. Appreciate Paddle it. Hale, uh, submits two dollars and says, "Are you related to Theodore R. Raim?" No. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. <laughs> Teddy Raim. Honey gives ten dollars and says, "Thank you for braving the cold for us." You're uh, welcome. I'm gonna go bad, brave it again now. Yeah, Bad Drivers of Milwaukee gives five dollars and says another free super chat. Enjoy the channel a ton. Hope YouTube notifies us of the second stream. Great. And one more All right, thing I'm going to um, go. Go ahead. Oh, I just, I just want to tell you we had 850 You're viewers fine. At, one, at one time here. So Excellent. Sweet. I'm looking forward to uh, being able to report something to you afterward. I'll see you later. <laughs>